our whole plan to use feral cats out here to control the rodents may have been an epic fail. The effort, time, and expense we put into doing these cats has been significant. Building this cat house, keeping the two feral cats in acclimation confinement for about a month, all of this might have been for nothing. The day after we released Mob Boss, we didn't see any of his cat food being eaten, so we were a little concerned that he just simply ran away and wasn't coming back. After day two though, at night, the cat food was being eaten so we'd notice it in the morning. It's been about a week since we released him and we've just gotten a motion activated trail camera to confirm that Mob Boss is still around. And last night we can confirm that it's been a possum that's been eating the cat food and we haven't seen any sign of the cat. Emerald, by the way, is doing okay. She's still recovering from her surgery, so we haven't released her out here yet. not go to all this effort just to feed possums. So last night we put out a large live trap with cat food as bait and we caught a possum. I drove about 15 miles out and we released him just off into the woods. He wasn't real uh, eager to leave the trap for some reason. I had to like tip it and kind of kind of get him out of the trap. But once he was hit the ground, he was off into the woods. Tonight we'll set the trap again to see if there are more possums out there. There's definitely another possum. Still no sign of Mob Boss. You know, it's, it's interesting to consider what kind of animals will go out of our way to try and promote, which ones we'll tolerate, and which ones we should actively try to get rid of. Remember that uh, ugly little bat that got stuck on the fly tape? We're okay with having a few bats out here. They're a natural way to control the insect population, and the insects have really gotten a little crazy since we've had the goats. There's a lot of wild rabbits out here, and that's good because they keep the coyotes satisfied and less likely to come after our other animals. We may get to the point where we just have to coexist with these possums. Evidently, adult cats and possums will generally leave each other alone and not attack each other. Our main concern is that the possum will just simply eat all of the cat food and the cat might need that food to survive. So I'm going to go ahead and try 
building a lip on some of these shelves in the cat house so we can put the cat food and water up higher where hopefully a possum won't be able to climb up and get at. All right, so this ledge will keep a cat dish from being pushed off and falling down to the floor where a possum or some other scavenger might then benefit from the food. We'll do one here and one up here. Probably water will stay down, down below and the food up above. Hopefully, only the cats will be able to climb up to get to this. For the time being, we're going to keep trapping these possums. They're creepy little critters. Wendy isn't real happy about having them right around our house. So as long as she wants us to keep using this live trap to get rid of them, I'm okay with, uh, with keeping on with that. Okay, it's been another week and it's time for another update on the cats and the possums. Emerald's doing much better got her out of the cone and back into the cat house. Okay, little emerald. I have a chance to get a little bit better before we let you go. The cat food that we've been putting up on the shelf hasn't been eaten either by possums or by mob moss. On the second night that we used the trail camera, we got video of another possum, but it didn't go into the live trap. trap inside the cat house just to mix things up a little bit and that night we did catch that awesome and no sign of mob boss either so it could be that mob boss is simply out doing his job or he could have run away we've looked for him using flashlights at night to see if we could catch his glowing eyes scanning up in the trees and, and down along the ground but uh, just no no luck so far.